Oh man, I got a good story for you guys today. Hope you guys all enjoy. Welcome back to more CSGO news. Uh, as always, all of today's stories will be timestamped down below because you might want to skip the first one, but I would encourage you not to, okay? I don't usually do this. I think you guys hopefully can believe me on that. It's based on one person out there, one Reddit user who's been posting rumors about potential sources who have apparently told him some crazy things happening in CSGO. The first of which, and most importantly, we're going to talk about and discuss, kind of gives us an opportunity to talk about the future MIBR roster, which is the first point he does address but he also goes on to list other sources who have apparently told him some very crazy things so if you guys want to skip to our next story feel free to if you want to discuss this crazy guy on reddit well it, it, he brings up some great points the first of which is going to be the mibr roster as we do know apparently cold zero is requesting to leave that roster supposedly after the major i think it's a safe assumption he will stick it out with the team earn some sticker money potentially even a playoff appearance for that roster and then move on elsewhere and this does line up with what this guy projected to happen and apparently Apparently it could be a brand new roster including though the reuniting of those two twins that being Henny and Lucas Henny to apparently rejoin that MIBR roster and rejoin his twin brother and you might be asking wait that's a bit weird right and you would be correct because Henny is of course the opera currently for Luminosity Gaming but it would make sense that he would want to rejoin his twin brother and with that being said the new rules have been released obviously on screen for you guys that would push apparently fall into the secondary opping role but also take over all of the primary IGL roles I think previously it was him and Cold Zero actually splitting those. So with Cold Zero departing, it would actually be more a primary focus for Fall into IGL and secondary op. Henny would primary op, so on and so forth. Everyone else would generally stay the same in their roles. And to think about this, it, it would make sense, right? With Cold Zero departing, uh, it would have, of course, Fall and have more on the IGL focus. And that, of course, he could be a little bit eased if he's going to be a secondary opper as uh, opposed to a primary opper. With that being said, he has not been in ideal form for quite some time now. And Henny could be a brand new opper. Uh, to take over that primary opping role. He's been doing a pretty decent job at that, and I think people could argue he could be a better opper than Fallen at this point in time. And, and very lastly as well, the twins playing for the, away from each other for the first time in nearly a decade, it would make sense they want to somehow rejoin each other and play together yet again. So with all of that being said, it kind of opens the floor for you guys to debate about the future MIBR roster. Does this rumor make sense to you? And to me, when I was talking with the guy who actually sent me this Reddit link, I thought, you know, in my head, Yes, I could see this happening, but that's the same thing with just about every other roster change out there. You can make sense of a lot of things. Does it mean it's going to happen? No. So take it with a grain of salt, but let's hop into some other things this guy has said is going to happen because he also did make sure to note that apparently Luminosity Gaming, once they traded Henny to MIBR to rejoin his twin brother, they'd be picking up a European replacement on that LG roster, which we've already heard rumors of potentially... I, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Smuya joining the LG roster to replace Henny as their opper. D it gets weirder though because he then lost me even further when he did say it, apparently after the major a Strauss to be making roster changes I know that's ballsy enough to say it would be young Danish player Roje to replace Magisk on that roster and this is where he has completely lost me and I want to know who this guy is but he did say sources have told him this is apparently going to happen so but it keeps going because he then states I think it actually might have been his first post as well because he obviously has a 100T fan in his username name apparently he does claim also after the major 100 thieves will return to Counter-Strike. So with all that being said, four, three or four pretty crazy rumors out there. Astralis changes, MIBR changes, apparently the Twins are coming back um, along with that. LG changes and then very lastly, 100T apparently coming back to Counter-Strike for the second time to try and make it work. Obviously, we have no idea what his sources are. He did not link a single thing. This could be a complete foolery of an account, but with everything he did say making somewhat of sense besides maybe the Astralis things, but of course Astralis is on the struggle bus. Um, I, I just opened the floor to all of you guys. Which of those rumors do you believe? You know, Smuya to LG, or MIBR changes, which is the most believable? Probably the MIBR new roster, which is the least believable. You guys can leave a comment down below. I love, I love you Reddit users, and I love your crazy theories. Let's actually hop into the actual factual CSGO news now and for all of you guys still watching thank you I love these kind of open debates and if you guys want more of this stuff I would gladly do it in the future but our second story all around vitality and the unfair mistreatment of them early on as well as still today even as a number two team in the world they are not being invited to events and again a very debatable point because when they are first on the rise they were a new French team and the French scene at that time and even still currently besides vitality is very much struggling so when this first lineup was actually 
actually joined together, no one knew what to expect out of them. And ever since, of course, acquiring Zaiwu, they've had that constant steady rise to where they are now. But back in the day, you remember to actually ESL Cologne, uh, the actual uh, open qualifiers, closed qualifier time. This, this tweet has now been deleted by MBK. But when he first tweeted this out, they were eventually then invited to the closed qualifiers. So they weren't having to go through the open qualifiers like G2, unfortunately enough. And ironically enough, uh, of course, they did receive an invite to the closed qualifier, but not to the actual event. It was Liquid, though, who declined their invite to the actual event, that being ESL Cologne, which happened this past weekend. So we had the winners of the closed qualifier, Vitality, and the winner of the open qualifier in Liquid, who took down G2. God, you got to feel bad for G2, right? They finally actually are participating in an open qualifier to make it. They make the grand finals of the open qualifier and have to face off against Liquid. But either way, your winners of the closed and open qualifiers for ESL Cologne were the two teams in the grand finals. So that's pretty crazy to see. But with that, you go back to WESG. I think Vitality also got invite there. At the time, they lost out to G2. They have not been invited to a couple, I think at least one ECS event on top of that. You go back to a few other moments where, yes, Vitality have struggled with apparently receiving invites. They've had to go through qualifiers. I don't think it was that big of an issue then, as it certainly is now. When it comes to ESL New York, as it is official, brought to us by MBK and Vitality, they will not be trying to qualify because they did not receive an invite to ESL New York. When you take a look at their page, they got six invites. Six invites, and none of them were to Vitality. Yes, you must take... Of course, for where these invites were probably sent out and actually closed quite some time ago, although the event's not for two more months. And now you have Vitality, the clear number two, maybe not the clear number two, but as of right now, the number two team in the world just placed second in ESL Cologne. And when it comes to ESL New York, they don't receive an invite and therefore they are withdrawing from the qualifiers, guys, and they will not compete at the event. And that to me, if the invites are not finalized as of right now, it, it, it's a bit atrocious now. I don't think it was that bad back then. I think it was a bit maybe overhyped by MBK and the guys, although I, I could be wrong on that, but certainly now as the number one, number two team in the world and proving themselves at Cologne, they should after this moment start receiving some invites and I think we a lot of us could agree on that and man today we have a lot of discussion points okay so you guys can leave multiple comments if you want I've not been replying to a lot of comments but I, I do always read through them a lot of discussion points out there because this next one is very debatable that around this emergency transfer rule because whether you make changes before or after the tra uh, the player trade lock you can only actually uh, change your roster based off several factors out there one of them being visa issues medical issues and then of course if your player had actually tried to qualify with other teams if you are had the major spot. It, it, it gets very weary across many teams out there. This is a now deleted tweet. So let's take that into fact. Zelsus has now deleted this tweet. He probably uh, wanted to take this back. So I'm not going to show it to you guys for too long. But Lazarus will not be in the minor for America because apparently they were not actually allowed to make roster changes. And that to me wants, wants me to actually clarify what exactly the issue here is. Because when you look back across several instances across the past few years, I think it was actually many years ago, Disco Doplin, I believe, through a major run he played for both Fnatic and NIP at separate times at separate parts of the major run whether it was the closed qualifier for the minor all the way up to the major itself and it was it was a very weird point in time because several teams ever since then have had big issues with these player transfers now we have NIP and the newly added Plopsky of course they cannot use him then we have LG though they'll be using Phelps as well and so yes you have all these different instances of players who could be used or can't be used and along with that apparently Lazarus either a they couldn't find players to transfer onto their team or B, they weren't allowed to. And it does make you question, is this actually a fair case? Now, um, again, that tweet was deleted. So we got to look more into the actual details of when these moves were made, whether players were allowed to actually move or not, or whether it was uh, it was uh, the, the major organizer actually stopping them themselves. And have they given any teams out there priority is the, is the big question, right? Because this could just be a complicated mess. And each team has their definitive reasons as to why they were allowed to actually use these players. And maybe we're overlooking something at the very least, though, it does seem very, very crappy for a team like Lazarus, a player like Zelsus, who is now two times actually missed out on stickers. This time around, of course, they had a shot at the major, probably not a great shot. But the fact that LG is now playing with Phelps and they will retake that spot, it is kind of sucky, but there's got to probably be a reason behind this. So I will look more into this, but it does seem over the past few years, these cases have been very various in the reasons why teams could or could not use players. So I'll try and look more into that and see if we actually have a case here. But with that being 
being said, Zelsis did delete the tweet, so maybe he did say something incorrect there factually, but we'll, we'll keep you guys posted on that. Very lastly, Virtus Pro fans, you better rejoice that we have a new number one team in Poland. Well, I guess not by official ranking, but that's going to be Virtus Pro winning their first event in God knows how long, and they actually beat the official number one team currently in Poland, that being Aristocracy, and I never really know how to pronounce their name exactly, but former Kingwin, that's Taz and his team. They take them down in the grand finals, and along with that, AGO was even there. I, I, I don't even know what is going on with AGO. I, I, apparently now they're using two different names. I thought it was XCOM at first, but now it's two split Ross. Guys, I don't understand, but all of a sudden within one event, we do have potentially Virtus Pro climbing from a barely top 10 uh, Polish team, I should say, now to the number one Polish team. It does seem their roster change has done something for that team, so congrats to them. They are, in my books, they could be competing for the number one team in Poland. As always, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you for the great feedback as of late. We've had some pretty crazy videos here on the channel and I really do appreciate you guys very much for all the comments and the, and the likes you guys you guys do leave on videos because some videos that I upload on the channel get a lot of dislikes because they're very controversial topics, but I'm really glad that I have this set base in CSGO because I want you guys to know every day I make CSGO videos, they are by far and away my favorite videos to make, even though I talk way too fast. Okay, I hope you guys have a good day, good night, wherever you are, and drink coffee. Bye. We'll